I'm going to show you how to get what is probably the absolute strongest weapon in the entire game, or strongest fuse, more so. So that way, you can just fuse it on anything you want, and then you can have a stupid amount of strength. So I can take a stick, for example. Just a plus four stick. And I can put this item on it. So we have this item up here. We're going to do it by fuse power, and we're going to explain about how to get this. So we're going to put this thing on the ground. We're going to just put a plus four stick, and we're going to use it. And now we have a stick that does 59 damage. So if you get a stronger weapon, I mean, you get 70, 80. Plus, if you have one that has the guard break, or not the guard break, one is, you know, durability is low. It does double damage, and you can get even higher. This is, as far as I'm aware, the strongest fuse in the game. And for good reason, because getting it is probably harder than anything you're going to do in the entire game. Uh, you have to fight five of the centaur bosses back to back to back. But... I have a way for you to be able to do this at any point in the game. Early game, late game, however. So right now, we are at this Colosseum. So in order to get here early game, or at any point, you can drop in this hole in the ground right here, which is right near the Hyrule Field Skyview Tower. You can drop into this hole, and that'll take you to the Nogu Kyok Light Route. Go south from there and come over here and get auto build at the Great Abandoned Central Mine while you're down there. But either way, you're going to work your way up here to the Floating Coliseum. And this is where things get really crazy. So, when you first come here, all these doors will be locked and nothing will happen. And that's the key to abusing this. Nothing will happen until you get near this treasure chest. And so, because of that, instead what you can do is you can drop down to one of these staircases over here. And then you can take your time and you can build this abomination. So the way that this works is you're gonna so you're gonna come over here and you're gonna build this thing with carts. You really need. I mean, this was a jank when I was doing this while fighting him. If you're not doing it while fighting him, it'll make it a lot better. But the main thing is you want to make sure there's enough weight on the back so it doesn't flip over forward. And yes, we have a stupid amount of canyon cannons. It might not be smart to line them up vertically. You might just want to line them up in a big grid. Doesn't really matter. Uh, the main thing is that what you can do is sit inside of this and tap it and it will activate it or tap it to turn it off. And this is really important because this will let you cheese all five of these guys without using any weapons or any armor or any items. And the reason that's important is because uh, if you actually try to fight them, your weapons don't take damage when you're mounted on them. You can mount them and beat on them. But outside of that, if you actually want to swing on them then you're going to have to go through like 20 to 30 weapons of sturdy, durable weapons to get through all five of these bosses, which is insane. Well, instead, you can kill them just as fast or faster with this baby. So what you're going to do is you're going to just come over here and make this. You can just try to match what I did here, which is just carts lined up on carts with carts on our sleds specifically. It could be carts, though. You can just use carts. And then we just have like the things on the side are just to help stabilize it. And the thing on the back is also to stabilize it. And the main thing is we need to be able to hide underneath of this because he's going to shoot arrows at us. So now what we're going to do... Uh, the cannons on the top are looking a little weird. I uh, hope they don't break off. We're going to go up here and we're going to put it up here. But we're going to rotate it around so that it's uh, facing the right way. Right now we have it facing forward. So now we're going to put it on right here. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to come over here and make sure we can get inside of it. Okay. If you can get inside of it, then everything's good. So then what you'll do is... Actually, I want to see. Can we climb this? Because that would actually make this even better. Yeah, it'd be even better. We can climb up like that. That's going to be the easiest way to get up here. Then what you would do, which I've already done, and I'll show you this cannon in action in just a second from the footage I recorded. But you're going to go over here and get near this chest, which will open up that door right there, and the first centaur will come out. So at that point, you just immediately run for your life over here, and then you're going to climb up to this. Okay. Then, once you stand in this, just make sure that he can see you and try to get him close enough. He'll, he should come close enough. Make sure he's, like, around there or something or within a reasonable range. Then he'll start shooting his bow, but he'll shoot it straight up and it'll come down on your head. But if you're underneath of this, it can't hit you. And also, he has a way to destroy these things, but he can't do it from this far away. So he can't destroy this device we've made. So then once we're here, we're going to hit this and it'll shoot all of our cannons at him and then it'll run out of zone eye charge. Then we just wait for our battery to refill, and then we just hit it again. And then we wait for our battery to refill, and hit it again. And this is probably going to be faster than any other way you can fight him. And even then, killing all five will probably take 30 to 60 minutes. But this will let you do it very, very early on in your game. And even later on in your game, this is still going to be probably the fastest way to do it. Especially if you have a lot of battery charge.
And here's some footage of me actually using it on the final one of these bosses, which was the tankiest. So even with this, I probably had to have my all eight of my cannons shoot at him. I don't know if I had eight cannons, nine cannons, or ten cannons. I had something like that. I had to have all these cannons shoot at this guy maybe like 70 to 100 times in order to kill him. That's how tanky this guy was. Maybe it was 50 times. I don't know. It was a lot of times. It literally took like 20 plus minutes just to kill this one. But he was the strongest one. The other ones have way less, not way less, but the other ones have less HP. But either way, this is the strategy that you can do in order to kill him early game. And then once you kill him, that's when you'll be able to get all the interesting loot. So let's go ahead and take a look at what happens after I kill him. And also the other ones drop good stuff, but this one in particular, this last one, drops the absolute best stuff. No way. I cannot believe he's actually dead. He probably had 10,000 hearts of HP. If I was him taking that much damage, I would have 10,000 hearts to absorb that much damage. Oh my god, that camera. Lionel Hoof. Lionel Hoof. L Silver Lionel Saber Horn. 55 fuse attack power. Good god. Insane. Large crystallized charge. Lionel guts. Another hoof. Arrows. We got the Savage Lionel Bow, does 32 damage and shoots three arrows at once. Too bad it'll probably break and be gone eventually. We got this. Silver Lionel Mace Horn, 51 fuse power. Uh, I think that was just, that's just something I could put on a, a part I could put on. Spiked Iron Ball Hammer, a large sword now decayed issue to the Royal Family's Guard it is tuned for skill use, skilled users and yields a powerful flurry rush during a perfect dodge. Absolutely insane. Insane loot. So now, before I even forget to do it, and I accidentally mess this up, uh, let me save my game. And if you're at this point, you should too. Save your game. And then you're going to want to duplicate it. So if you don't know how to duplicate it, you can see my duplication video in the description of this video somewhere. But we're going to duplicate this item. So we have it organized by fuse attack power. I might have to reorganize it because it's probably at the bottom of my inventory. Alright, so the silver Lionel Saber Horn. Let's duplicate this. Whoops. Okay. Drop that. Equip. Let's see if we actually got it. Okay, let's duplicate this too while we're at it. There we got two. Let me go ahead and duplicate this before I forget, just so make sure I never lose it. Okay, did that duplicate it? Okay, I didn't mean to do. I don't even care about this item. Okay, we got two of each now. Now we got two of each. Okay, huge. You should definitely duplicate those again. If you don't know how to duplicate, just check the description of this video for duplication exploit. That's another whole other video. Let's see what the loot is from this. I'm so excited. Majora's mask, an eerie mask passed down from ancient times. Wearing it makes it harder for certain enemies to spot you. It's a rather rare find. Holy hell, was that the most difficult thing to get in the entire game. That literally took me like half an hour to an hour of just battle time, not including deaths. That's absolutely insane. I cannot believe we just found Majora's Mask. So now you have two options for using the strongest weapon. If you want to use the duplication glitch, you can use the duplication glitch. Again, if you want more instructions on that, the link for that's in the description of this video buried in there somewhere. Alphabetical, hopefully. And then the other option is if you want to play legitimately without duplicating things is now you without duplicating things is now you have two different materials that are really strong this one and this one and you have to be very careful to never lose them then and the way you can do that is you can go up to a place up here called Tari Town and way up here there's um uh what is it called a Goron a little baby Goron you can talk to and you can there a break apart shop and you can take the fused item off of your weapon without breaking it. So just make sure that you never let it break. When the message pops up, the durability is low, then stop using that weapon. You could also save your game and, you know, periodically and load your game if you accidentally mess up and break it eventually. Uh, that's how you can play legitimately. Or you just duplicate it and have a ton of them and just let them break and just put new ones on constantly, which is what I'm going to be doing because I'm a YouTuber. I don't have time for this crap. So anyway, also, if you need good bases for it, you can go over to Mirari Inn, the Mirari Inn shrine down here, and there are sturdy sticks you can get. I'm going to go ahead and show you. So at the Marari Inn Shrine, you can go over here and fly down to here. 
Although they're gone right now because I just took them recently, but there's two sticks here that respawn every hour or two. And then you'll climb up here and they're sturdy sticks. They have extra durability. That's the reason we're getting these sticks in particular is they'll actually last longer. Now, again, they haven't respawned yet, but there's another one right there that you can grab, which again, I've already grabbed because I literally just grabbed them before fighting those guys. They haven't had time to respawn just yet. Then you're going to fly over to here and you're going to run back into this cave. And then there's one more sturdy stick that's also gone because I just took it recently. And it's going to be on top of these boxes. So there's a bunch of sturdy sticks for you to get every hour or two to throw those that silver lionel horn onto. And that will give you like tons of good weapons to use. And before we close this out, if you're actually really new to the game, you might not understand how to get those parts I talked about. And so I want to make sure I do include somewhere in here how to get those parts. So there are device dispensers throughout the world. And most of the time they're up in the sky. You'll find a lot of them up in the sky. So really all you need is like this one, which has cannon and cart. That would pretty much be it. This one literally has everything you need. Cart, cannon, construct, head. And in order to get to this one, you're just going to go all the way up here and go to the Ulri Mountain Skyview Tower right here. And then you can fly up to this plateau that has a flux construct on it. And instead you'll land right here and there's a device you can put together to fly. And then you can fly over to here and activate the Natak Shrine. And then you can go to this device dispenser whenever you want to get cannons, carts, and construct heads. Then you can go ahead and make the first time of it. You can make it like the first time. But you also want to go down to the depth like I talked about earlier in the video. And go to, Cor oh, not Cordot, yeah, the Cordot Light Room. No, 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 not that one. This one. The Great Abandoned Central Mine. Mine. Okay. You're going to go to this one. And then once you go there, just by going there and doing it, it'll, you know, do a quest. That'll give you auto build, which then makes things way easier in case you think it's destroyed. Because if you save and load the game, your device is going to disappear. So then you definitely want to have auto build. So you can just go like this and go auto build and then find the last iteration of it and then put it back together at the cost of, of Zeonite. Or you can also, if you don't know how auto build works, you can just throw down all the parts and then, or throw down a bunch of the parts and it'll make it cost less Zeonite. So I could throw down my last two sleds and my last three cannons real fast. And then I could auto build... And then it would, instead of costing 50 something, it would cost 36, for example. So, you know, you could do something like that in order to make it easier. Uh, so that's how to get all those parts in case you were lost or confused on that. And once you have all that, you are good to go, guys. If you just follow this guy and do what I showed you, then you'll be able to not only get the strongest weapons in the entire game, but you'll also be able to get the awesome legendary piece of gear, Majora's Mask, which is super cool doesn't really serve very much practical purpose but it's super super interesting makes the wear makes it harder for certain enemies to spot you it's a rather rare find i'm sure it has some kind of secret use somewhere in the game but we'll figure that out with time but either way guys that's how to get the most powerful weapon in the game have infinite of them how to duplicate the, the fuse attachment in order to have infinite of the strongest weapon and to get majora's mask in the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom